Hello, today I wanted to make a really quick video showing you how to create custom snippets in VS Code. Now to do so, we're going to first start by pressing Command Shift P or whatever your command is to open up the command palette. Then I'm going to press snippets or I'm going to type in snippets and go to configure user snippets and you'll see a list of files. You're going to go ahead and type in the language you want to use. If you want it to be used across all languages, type in global and create a new global snippets file. I want it to be JavaScript, so I'm going to type in JavaScript. And you're either going to have two, you're going to have one of two options. It's either going to say JavaScript.json or your language.json. And you can select that, and that means your file has already been created for your snippets. Now, if you don't have a file name uh, or a JSON file for your language, then it'll just say your language name and then your language name in parentheses. And you can select that, and it will create one for you. I'm going to go ahead and select JavaScript.json. And as you can see, there's a description here and then an, also an example snippet. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this entire uh, description, and then I'm going to uncomment the example snippet and the last line as well. And I'll save this, head over to snippet.js, and we'll show you how to use this. So the prefix here is log, and I'm going to show you what that means. If I go over to snippet.js and type in log and press enter, the snippet that was defined in the body is then uh, transferred in automatically into the snippet.js. It just pops it right in there in place of the log. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this and we can go ahead and go over the different keys and values in this snippet. So the first thing to go over is the overarching key value pair of the snippet. So that's going to be the key is going to be the name and then the values or the value is going to be an object that contains some settings or some options. So make sure you add a good name to your snippets. It just helps, uh, it helps readability and also just definitions throughout VS Code. So here it's print to console, which is very clear and descriptive. Now inside of the options or inside of the object here, you have prefix, which is required. And prefix is going to be the value that you type into any code file or any file at all that you then press enter after typing it in and press enter it's going to pop in the body of the, of the snippet that you define. And so this is really kind of your shortcut word for this body here. Now the body, we'll go over how to define our own bodies and the different options that we have. But this is just the body of the, of the snippet that gets popped in, the actual code that you want there. Then the description is just a descriptive string explaining what this snippet does. So let's create our own snippet. I'm going to go ahead and hop down here and create a new key value pair, and I'll call this print subscribe. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a new object for options, and I'll put the prefix in there, and we'll call it psub, just like so. And then I'll create a body, and for this one, we're going to call it, we're going to make this a function. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, for now I'm just going to create an empty array, and I'll show you uh, what different options are there. I'm going to create a description that just says print subscribe. Now, going back to the body, there's something that's really important to note. is the array, There's an array of strings, and each new string in the array defines a new line. So I'm going to start off this first line by typing in function, and we'll call it print subscribe. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, start a new line after the first bracket, and we're going to go ahead and make it a console.log, and then I'll just say subscribe in here. And then I'm going to go ahead and close that single quotes, go to another new line, and close out the function, like so. And I'm going to go ahead and save that. And if we go back over to snippet and type in psub, it should show us the function, the snippet that we created that is print subscribe, just like so. Pretty easy, uh, but there's some more cool options we can add using the, uh, the options that VS Code gives us. So I'm going to go to the VS Code documentation, actually, and I'm going to show you some of the cool stuff we can do with it. So if I go here to the documentation, this link will be in the description below, as well as a snippet generator that we'll go over later, and I'll show you how to use this in a bit. But here is the documentation for the VS Code snippets. Uh, we'll go over tab stops. Oops, we'll go over tab stops, placeholders, and choice, um, as well as an example variable. But if you look through here, there's quite a few more options and some cool stuff you can do here. 
So well, let's go back to Visual Studio Code and let's create a new snippet. So this one we'll call um, print channel subscribe. And we're gonna use what's called the tab stop here. So let's start a new object and let's call it prefix. Let's do uh, pchan, that's fine. And then we'll call body. And we're again gonna set this to an empty array at the moment. And then we're gonna do description and let GitHub Copilot do that. So for the body, we're gonna start off by putting in the function. We'll call it print channel subscribe. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and delete back to here because I don't want this to be, I want to write this all. I don't want it to be confusing. So first what we're gonna do is put in bracket next line. We'll do console.log with single quotes and I'll come back to this. And then I'm gonna go ahead and close the function up. Now this console.log, we want our cursor to end up here in the middle of the console.log when we press tab, or when we uh, enter the snippet. So we can just go straight into typing the channel name. So here we're gonna put in what's called a tab stop and use dollar sign and then an integer. So we're gonna start with one. So you start with the lowest integer except for zero. So start with one and then you can move on to different integers, two, three, four, etc., to create, to move your tab, your cursor when you press tab. What I mean by this is, so let's say you had another line and we'll actually do that. Let's say we have another line here, console.log and then a dollar sign two here. We're gonna, it's gonna start off by creating this, um, this snippet for us and putting our cursor at this dollar sign one. Now, once we type in whatever we want and press tab, it's gonna hop us to the dollar sign two. And I'll show you that in action. So if I go in and save this, then I'm going to press P Chan. And as you can see, there's two console logs there. I'm gonna type in my channel name and then I'm gonna press enter and I'll type in Mr. Beast. Not Mr. Brass, Mr. Beast. And go ahead and save that. And as you can see, when I press tab, it hopped me from the first console log to the second. So now we're gonna do another snippet and this time I'm gonna show you what is called uh, placeholders. So if I go ahead and do print channel, or let's do print placeholder. I'll create a new object. Again, let's let GitHub Copilot do the prefix. PPH is fine, print placeholder is fine. So let's go ahead and erase this. Let's call it function print placeholder. Whoops, we want it inside of a string. Uh, function print placeholder. And then I'm going to close that first line, console.log. And I'm going to go ahead and leave that blank for a second so I can close the, the function up. And there we go. So now if I head over into this console log, instead of using dollar sign integer, we're gonna use dollar sign open close brackets. So if we want this to be our first tab stop, we're gonna put with a default value, we're gonna put one and then do a colon. And then here we're going to put the default value we want. So I'll do code deep dive like so. And I'll go ahead and save that. Now you can see when I go back, it's gonna default to code deep dive but if I type, it's going to allow me to overwrite it. So if I go ahead and it was PPH, I believe. Yep, and there you can see it defaulted to code deep dive. And if I press tab, then it's going to leave that. If I do it again, and this time, if I don't press tab and I instead type, and it is going to just overwrite it right away. And that's super useful and quick. Now the last, or the second to last one I'm gonna show you is going to be a uh, one call with a choice. So it's going to be a print choice. And I'll go ahead and set up the options here. Do prefix. We'll call this print choice. Uh, or we'll do PPC, which is fine. And then we'll do body. I'm going to go ahead and erase what they wrote here because that is wrong and then I'll let it write the description. Ah, I'll let it write the description for me. There we go. So now we come back to the body. Let's start again by doing function print choice. If 
open bracket, and then we'll do a console.log with single quotes inside, and then we're gonna go ahead and close up the function again. Now, we're gonna use what's called a choice. So to start, we're gonna start again by using the dollar sign brackets, and we're gonna use the tab stop indicator again. So in this case, one, because that's the first one that I want it to show up on. And then I'm gonna use the or operator. So I'm gonna use an or operator and comma separated values. So let's say a code deep dive and then a comma Mr. Beast. And then I'm gonna use the close or operator and you can add as many values as you want here. It does not matter. So you can add as many as you want. I'm gonna save this and we'll go back to the snippet.js and I'll show you what that looks like. It's PPC, is that right? Yep, and there you go. You can see when I press enter, this set of options shows up. Uh, I can type whatever I want in, or I can just choose an option uh, that I want here. So you say, well, Mr. Beast, go ahead and press enter on it and press save, or press save. And there you go, it's all set. Now the last one I'm gonna show you is going to be, let's call it print hour. And so this is going to use a default variable that's built into snippets. And so that's going to be the current hour, which should end up, it just turned to 11, so it should be 11 is what is printed. So if I go PH, or I'll do PCH for print current hour. Uh, I'll do body, and we'll set that to an empty array. And then we'll do description, let it fill in again. And for the body here, I'm going to set up a function, print current hour. And then I'll go ahead and open it. And then we're going to console.log, open and close, single quotes. And then we're going to leave the dollar sign bracket there for now. I'm going to go ahead and close the parentheses here. And then I'm going to hop over to the next line. And I'm going to close the bracket like so. Now if I come back into this console log, I can type in current underscore hour. And this is a default built-in variable. Actually, I don't need these brackets. This is a default built-in variable for user or for VS Code snippets. I'm going to save this, but I want to show you the variable options you have. So there's current year, current month, current day, date, hour, minute, set, like all these different options. Um, you can do a random base six number, a random UID, uh, block comments. It's all in the documentation, super useful, um, and a bunch of cool different variables you can use there. So if I go back to Visual Studio and go to snippet.js, and I'll do PCH for print current hour, and there you go, it prints 11, or it set, sets 11 inside the console log. So I hope this video helped. If it did, I'll leave a like, comment, subscribe. I'm actually going to show you really quickly the snippet generator that I found. So full credit to this guy, whoever built this, uh, Paul. I don't know how to pronounce that last name, so I'm not, not even going to try. Um, super useful. You type in the name here or the description. So just call function or logging. Uh, and then the this fills in the prefix and the name here. Uh, or sorry, the description fills in the description and the name. And then this fills in the prefix. So it's called tab trigger. So my funk. And then you can go ahead and just write normal JavaScript with the filler values or placeholder values being uh, command I and it'll put in a placeholder value for you there or you can put it in manually and again you can use the same or writers for choice or you can use uh, you can use default or nothing and so it makes it super simple uh, and maybe a little bit easier to actually write the snippets rather than doing so within the array of strings so I hope this video helped if it did please leave a like subscribe again and I'll catch you in the next one